Hi, today we're going to talk about types of disinformation in the Philippine elections and why there is a need to fact check. I am Professor Rachel Khan of the UP College of Mass Communication Journalism Department. Nazi propaganda officer Joseph Goebbels had said, repeat a lie often enough and it becomes the truth. Unfortunately, this is the motto of many authors of this information. When we look at the disinformation disorder, we look at the intent and what knowledge it purports. If the intention is not to deceive but is a mistake, or the author themselves have been mistaken, then we call this misinformation. When from the get-go there is an intent to deceive the audience, when there is malice intended, then we call this disinformation. At the same time, what does it purport? Is it an opinion? Is it a real person's opinion or are they putting words in his mouth? Or if it is a fact that they express, is it a true fact or is it a falsehood? There are many types of disinformation and we will look at categories espoused in the study of Wardell and Derek Shan in 2017. The first one is satire or parody. This type of information has no intent to cause harm, but has the potential to fool. Actually, the authors had meant to be funny, to make you laugh. Unfortunately, some people share it as, as if it were a fact. And many times they even take out the source or the logo of the source so that people will be fooled to think that the news is real, such as this example from Adobo Chronicles. Another example is from this spoof site called Sandro Marcos Only, where they posted a picture of presidential aspirant Bongbong Marcos as the first man on the moon. It was just supposed to be a joke, but then it started circulating on the internet as if it were a fact. The second type of misinformation is called misleading content. This is because there is a misleading use of information to frame an issue or individual. For example, a YouTube video that has been spliced to make it appear as if presidential aspirant Isco Moreno had been making fun of Robredo. It could also be that a, an old picture is used as something current. Uh, these are, this is a group rallying against the government with regard to the lack of development um, from the 2013 Typhoon Yolanda, and this was taken in November 2017. But the false news was purporting that this picture was taken in December 2021. Another type of disinformation is fabricated content. This is Content that is 100% false and is designed to deceive or do harm. It could also be promoting a person with false information or giving them claims of accomplishments that are not theirs. We have two examples here on the screen. Another type of disinformation is false connection. When real images are used to create false narratives. For example, in the above photo, the false information saying that um, the Marcos mansion was destroyed by the opposition or people who attacked the family, when in fact it was Typhoon Yolanda that had destroyed the mansion. Another type is false context. This is when genuine content is shared with false contextual information. Similar to the misleading content, we see here that real pictures, which, are, which was taken in 2016, is presented in a Facebook post of a senator as if it were taken in April 2020, making it appear recent when it is an old photo. Another is imposter content, when genuine sources are impersonated. We have here the case of Fact Check Philippines, which is a credible source of fact checks. 
Unfortunately, there is a fake fact checker that is copying their layout and sending out false fact checks. Now, how do we know that it is false? Because it is not the post is nowhere to be seen except in their own Facebook page. And it is not trending. It is not shared by anyone else. Um, So you only fact check something that is trending or is threatening the uh, veracity of public knowledge. Another example is manipulated content. This is when genuine information or imagery is manipulated to deceive. In general, all social media-based polls or surveys are manipulated content in a sense since they are not scientific in method and can be influenced by algorithms. Many times, what we see as surveys or polls are influenced by our own networks. So it could be that we think that someone is in the lead when actually it's only because the people of that same network, meaning people who think alike, were the ones who answered the poll. We have to keep in mind that there is no such thing as spontaneous disinformation. All this information is created and planned. First, there is the, con- the author who conceptualizes the disinformation and gives it either to production or produces it himself and then has a series of um, either influencers or certain websites wherein they distribute this false information. When it is spread, it is redistributed by the networks of these um, social media platforms until it becomes um, hard to trace and becomes trending all over the social web. So at this time of elections, we have to have a fact-checking state of mind. One way of doing it is to go to Google search. In fact, Google has a specific search engine that checks or looks for information among the credible fact-checkers. This can be seen as in toolbox.google.com slash factcheck slash explorer. Then for election-related verification, you can go to check.ph, a collaborative effort of universities, civic society, and media to check information to make sure that the public gets verified and true information. For references about types of disinformation, you can look up Wardle and Derek Champ, Information Disorder Toward an Interdisciplinary Framework for Research and Policy Making. 